Hello. This is where we're at. You know, I was getting ready to film, and then my body was like, eh, no, I'm just gonna sit. I'm just going to sit today, so I think I'll film tomorrow. Uh, which is, so you will already know, I'm trying to do more casual videos. So I'm gonna be talking about um, reading for particular themes. And so I realized that all the books I'm reading are going well together in a particular theme. Also, please ignore the stacks of books everywhere. We're in the process of putting like the Christmas stuff back away and this is what real houses look like. They don't all look like catalogs, you know? Anyway, so uh, I am reading for the Afrofuturism theme, which on the podcast comes out uh, in February, because for Black History Month, we're doing Afrofuturism, and then for Women in Hist Women's History Month, we're doing Women in History, which is mainly focusing on women historians. So what I'm doing actually all fits together, because I'm reading Afrofuturism, Afrofuturism, because I'm reading Afrofuturism, by Natasha L. Womack, which is one of the premier texts on Afrofuturism, not just in literature, but in music and other uh, medias. And then I have The New Jim Crow, which is sitting over there somewhere. And then I also have The Warmth of Other Sons, and I also have uh, The History of White People by Nell Irvin Painter. Um, uh, Nell Irvin Painter is a black woman, and she writes the history of white people which is an interesting perspective. If I find the video where she talks about it, I'll link it down below. Um, but reading all of these histories about African Americans in the United States, and also reading about Afrofuturism, um, including Octavia Butler is one of the titles I'll be reading for Afrofuturism, they all go together so well. Uh, I didn't realize that needing to record the Women in History episode a little early uh, would mean that I would be reading all of these together, but I think they really work. So I wanted to record this experience of reading all of these books together that seem to go together. So right now, like I said, I'm about halfway through this one. Um, I'm annotating it and using all the book darts and all the things because this is a great text if you want to learn more about Afrofuturism. And um, I'm also about a fifth, a quarter of the way through The Warmth of Other Suns. Uh, I bought the book used and it came in a really gross condition, not what it said online, which is always, you know, a possibility, but I got one that I could return. I didn't like the way that it was, so I returned it, so now I'm waiting for them to send me a new one. I also just ordered a uh, history of white people and hardbacks. I'm a hardback person, and I'm waiting for that to come in, but I just bought the new Jim Crow over at M. Judson, which is my local indie, and so I'm excited. I'm excited about them. So that's what we're going to be doing. You're going to be seeing a lot more of Kendra with air drying hair and no makeup and things, but I think that this will be a great little vlogging read along experience. So I'm going to go read and I will come talk to you later when I've read some more stuff because that's how vlogging works, right? Right? <laughs> hey friends, it's January 8th. I could be wrong. I don't have my watch on anymore. Uh, so I finished Afrofuturism and it's really good and I'm going to talk to you about it after I process. Uh, it's so good and I ran out of book darts and that's always a good sign I guess but I underlined all the things. It was like being in grad school again and reading an academic text which it is. It's one of the premier texts talking about Afrofuturism as a movement, but she also, you know, doesn't just talk about literature. She talks about music and, you know, visual art as well, which is pretty great, which I really enjoyed. And so I am now um, on The Warmth of Other Suns, and so I am reading um, this one for Women in History in March. It's one of our discussion picks. It's Jacqueline's discussion pick. And I didn't realize it's a National Book Critics Circle Award winner. I really love the National Book Critics Circle Award. It's probably my favorite literary prize in as far as consistent quality. Because they are writers, they, they really feature books for writers. Writers, if that makes sense. Uh, they don't really care what's popular or accessible or whatever. They just do it pure for the purely for the love of writing. And 
different things. So I'm sure there's obviously always politics and blah, 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 blah that goes into book prizes. But for me, it's consistently great. They picked uh, like uh, Caroline Frazier's biography of Laura Ingalls Wilder one year for their nonfiction. And apparently they picked this one. And I really like what they do. And they often pick books that might have been overlooked um, by critics or whatever. And I really love them. Anyway, I've already, I'm several hours into this, like five hours, but I still have 70 hours of audio left, so you're going to be seeing this one a lot. Yeah, I'm also reading Such a Fun Age by Kylie Reed. I'm doing an interview with her at the end of the month, and so I needed just something, like, less intense than a academic text or a giant history book about a topic, and so I picked up that. So it's really enjoyable. I think I'll finish it today. So I started yesterday. It's pretty good. Um, and then our next fiction book will be Octavia Butler's Parable of the Sower. Because we record in a couple weeks. And so I definitely need to get that read as well. And then I have another fiction book I need to read for that theme as well. So just all of the books, apparently, <laughs> that I need to get read. So we'll get there. Hey friends, Kendra here. It is January 16th, so it's been a bit. Uh, so I wanted to give you an update on what I've been reading. Um, so I finished Afrofuturism, which was great, which I talked to you a little bit about. I'm still working on more of the other sons. I figured it was the length of like three different books, and I usually have a nonfiction and a fiction audiobook going, so that's going to be my nonfiction still for a while. Uh, we record in about a month for that. So I have time because I have to read that and another one that is of similar length between now and then. But we're recording before that, the Afrofuturism theme. So I want to show you some of the books that I have been reading for that and kind of update on all of that, which is very exciting. Like I did not expect to love these books as much as I do just because I'm normally not a sci-fi post-apocalyptic kind of person, but I realized I've been reading the wrong post-apocalyptic kind of stories. Okay, so as far as Afrofuturism goes, um, I read in like two days Octavia Butler's Parable of the Sower, and I loved Kindred. I figured this book would be really, would be good, but I didn't think it would be like a Kendra book, but it's so good. Um, it's about a woman who is in this like post-apocalyptic kind of situation. It's in the 2025 around that time. And so it's pretty close. And I figured, found out that she was born in 2009, according to the story. So anyway, so the country has collapsed. Uh, global warming and different things have kind of destroyed the weather and made everything just kind of collapse in on itself. Her dad is a preacher, but she doesn't believe in her dad's version of God. So she creates her own and starts this belief system called Earth Seed, which is this whole story. So she is on this journey to try to find a place for herself. Uh, this book is so good. I didn't expect, as I said, to enjoy it as much as I did, but this kind of reminds me about how much I love Severance by Ling Ma. I love that book and I really enjoyed this one. But what I'm enjoying even more than this one is the second book. So the second book, which is what I'm reading right now, is where Lauren, the protagonist from the first book, has settled this commune kind of thing for her new belief system. Um, and so she is now facing a different kind of faux antagonist. So like the environment is no longer like an antagonist as much as the people around her are. And it's not as it's not a journey book like the first book was. That was sort of like a, a quest to find a home. The world is, has ended, blah, blah, blah. But this one is a book that's about her belief system and uh, finding people she thought she'd lost. And also a very creepy uh, dude who's running for president. It's now the uh, 1930s, is the 2030s. And there's this guy, I think he's called like Aaron, Jared, I don't know. Anyway, he's a dude who is running on this idea of making Mer America great again, 
we used to be a Christian nation. Why are we no longer a Christian nation? And he even goes so far as to start his own denomination of Christianity, which is like America first. It's so frightening. It's so frightening. And like, I don't know how I feel knowing that I live in an Octavia Butler post-apocalyptic novel, apparently. Uh, this novel is set in California, as is the first one. Uh, but it's just so weird. It's just so weird and creepy how she predicted so much of a certain president's campaign uh, and how it would work and how he marketed himself and his platform to the world at large. Oh my goodness, this is really good. Also, the audiobook is narrated by a different narrator per perspective because so this isn't just Lauren's perspective now. It's two other people's and I won't tell you who it is in case that's a spoiler, but I would highly recommend not reading the back of this book because that does spoil the first book. So just FYI. Oh my goodness, my arm was about to fall off. Um, so I really love that duology. It's so good. And you know, the first one was written in 1993. The second one was written in 1998, I think. Uh, those might just be the audiobook copyrights, but either way, it, it's a while ago. And the fact that she was able to predict so much in Parable of the Talents is frightening. I'm interested to see how it ends. I, as I said, I really love the audiobooks for these. Uh, I will say Lauren's perspective in the first book is narrated by a different person, different audiobook narrator than her perspective in the second book. But it didn't bother me because in the second book she's older and so the narrator sounds older in the second book. P.S. I'm so sorry the camera shakes. I just realized that that might be a problem, but you know, chronic illness problems I don't know what to tell you. I work out with two and a half pound weights, so not exactly the most buff soul, you know? <laughs> uh, I have finished Octavia Butler's Earthseed Duology. Oh, let me tell you. <sighs> Handmaid's Tale, step aside. There is no, there is no absolute reason why Margaret Atwood is so famous and Octavia Butler is not as well widely read because she is just as good, I think better than Margaret Atwood's Handmaid's Tale. I don't understand. I just don't understand. Octavia Butler's Earthseed uh, duology is, uh, is post-apocalyptic novel about this black a woman trying to survive and create her own belief system. And then in the second book, uh, it has a lot to do with this guy who runs for office. And like I said in a previous clip, like he's running on Make America Great Again, essentially, and how that turns into this extremist religious cult where they abduct people and try to re-educate them and all of these things. It is very harrowing, very difficult to read, but I think it's so good. So now I have like one third left of the warmth of other suns. I'm consistently making progress. So that is encouraging. That's encouraging. You want to know what Dylan does while I sit here and read and do work? He eats his apple. And never fear, he leaves the core of the apple on the floor. He doesn't eat it. So we have pieces of apple all over the house. Yes, do you have pieces of apple? Do you like your snack? I think that's a yes. Look how polite he is. He is a true southern gentleman. So I am about done with reading for the two themes that I've been reading. I have uh, The Finished Warmth of the Other Suns uh, and also choose the second pick I'm going to talk about. So it's either History of White People, The New Jim Crow, or this one I just picked up called Wayward Lives, Beautiful Experiments. It's by a MacArthur Fellow and Tristan McMillan Cotton recommended it to me. And I it's only 10 hours on audio, so I might go that direction since I haven't heard people talk about it and I have heard people talk about the other two. I don't know. Whatever ones don't make it, I'll just mention as extra resources. This year on the podcast, uh, the the patrons asked if we could include like further reading on a particular theme. So if we're talking about you know women in history, for example, and women historians, we would have more resources for them about that. So um, I, I really like that idea. We used to actually do that in the very beginning of the podcast, but I think it'll be easier to actually mention it on the podcast as opposed to doing a blog post like we used to do. In addition to that, I have three interviews in the next two weeks. I realize I'm recording 
five podcast episodes in a very short amount of time. So I'm going to be talking to Nicole Chung, who is the author of, um, well, editor of this one. She's the author of a memoir. Uh, but this one is A Map is Only One Story, 20 Writers on Immigration, Family, and the Meaning of Home. I'm going to talk to her about what it's like editing Catapult Magazine as well as this anthology. Talking to her on the last day of the month. Uh, this Friday, I'm talking to Tishani Doshi, the author of Small Days and Nights. And so the audiobook hits my phone at 12 a.m. tonight, which I'm very excited about. But I have to read this, interview her Friday, and then turn in the episode Friday night. So it's going to be a lot. But... I'm very excited about it. And then next week, um, in addition to interviewing Nicole Chung, I'll be interviewing Kylie Reed, the author of Such a Fun Age. It's very popular right now. Um, what's interesting is, thank you, Dylan. What's interesting is that sometimes author interviews, we go through the publicist and it's like a one-off kind of thing. Um, but with this one, uh, Kylie Reed's interview, I have a slot, a time slot, because she's doing like an entire day of like podcast interviews and radio interviews and stuff. And so I have a 30 minute slot. And so I have to keep the entire interview to like 25 minutes because pre and post production stuff is also included in that time limit. So you have a very short amount of time. So we'll see how it goes. I'm excited I get the opportunity to talk to her, but it's a very different. So, but I look forward to it. I've already finished the book, ready to go. Okay, so I have finished The Warmth of Other Suns. I feel like it's this uh, weight lifted off my shoulders. That I finished this gargantuan book. And I know I mentioned like putting away the Christmas decorations in the beginning of this video. That never happened. Let's just be honest. The books are just books. Books are scattered around the house. Boxes are scattered around the house. But I decided that after the Super Bowl would be a good time to put away the Christmas decorations, right? Right? Okay. So anyway. And stockings. No shame. I finished this book. It is very long. It is very good. You should read it. But just know that it is very long. Very worth it. Very good. Very long. Uh, so Jacqueline and I are going to discuss this book. This is her discussion pick as far as women in history for Women in History Month, etc., etc. I'll spare you. You can go listen to the episode if you want me to talk about this more. Really liked it. We recorded the Afrofuturism episode. Uh, Dylan is dancing and making merry behind you with his manta ray toy. Um, I read and interviewed Tishani Doshi, which comes out two days from now. So by the time you watch this, it'll probably be coming out, is out. I don't know. So there's that. And... Um, yeah, that's pretty much the end, I think, of this reading vlog. I'm not going to finish the other decision, what I'm going to do as regards to reading for uh, the Women in History Month thing. I'm not going to finish that until February because I don't know which one I'm going to pick. So I'll pick that up in the February reading vlog. But yeah, this was lovely chatting with you. I am so sorry that <laughs> the camera moved horribly. I feel so badly about that, but you know what? We live and learn. And so hopefully I put enough warning on the screen for you so that you didn't become ill. Or maybe you are like me and you play videos like podcasts while you're washing dishes or something. I don't know, but next time it will be better. I promise. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for watching. And if you want to hear us talk about the books that I read for this month's uh, podcast theme. Uh, they will come out the first Wednesday and the third Wednesday of February. So stay tuned and uh, keep an eye out for that. And I will talk to you guys later. Bye.